From the dawn of man, there has always been art. And among this art, there exists the greats. Instantly recognizable pieces that both revolutionized and epitomized the medium. From paint, to sculpture, to music, and contemporary mediums like film and video games. Among plastic model kits, there has not yet been a great that defines plastic as a medium. That is, until now. This is the high-grade Kyokai Senki fucking truck. I mean, seriously, it's a fucking truck. This truck is awesome. I mean, the balance is great. It like speeds around the place. It like dominates the floor of my crack den of an apartment like so well. I mean, nothing knocks this thing over. This is even better than the the real great new Gundam. This is even better than the mobile Haro. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean that. Hey, what is up everyone? Today I'm taking a look at the high-grade armored special carrier from Kyokai Senki. As usual, this video right here would not have been possible without those absolutely awesome people over at Hobby Link Japan. So if you want a truck for your robots, all of your own, there's a link down there in the description. Now here we go. So jumping right on into what we get in the box once it's all put together, and that is the tractor unit itself, the trailer segment. We've got this section for attaching more trailers. Those are not included. You need to buy more of this box. And this, which I was not expecting. This is a weapon for using with Kembu, and another reason that you might just want to buy two of these. But anyway, before I talk about the actual beauty that is this armored special carrier, let's talk a little bit about the build. So on busting open this box, we've got a whole bunch of plastic in here. A lot of the parts are quite large, as you would expect with something like this. But at the price point of about $25 or so, you get quite a bit in here, especially considering how unique this is when it comes to Bandai's Plamo. The build itself is a whole lot of fun. It is really fun, I find, to build Bandai's quality kits of something that's a little more unique. I don't think I've ever built anything that's like a truck or a vehicle like this by them before. This is quite simple, but at the same time, very, very well designed. The wheels all work, which is cool. The front two wheels are attached together, so they turn together. All the other axles are attached together, so the wheels run together, but the only ones that turn are up front. We've got clear parts for the windscreen, the headlights, there are some stickers in here. If you did not use them, you probably would not notice so much. These seem to be where the lights would be, and if you're feeling a little bit creative, you could replace those with something like some LEDs. That would look really cool. I didn't expect it at first, but we do have two different shades, if not three different shades of grey in here. I think it's two, but it is a little hard to tell. I think it is just the two, but still very, very nice. It has a lot of nice detail, yet at the same time is a little bit simple. But honestly, I had a whole lot of fun putting this together. Let's check it out. Also, there's something I didn't expect in here. So first up in here is this, the tractor unit. And this is so cool. It's a really nice take on, well, a standard articulated truck. It looks extremely, well, not too extremely futuristic, just mildly futuristic, kind of like Kyokai Senki is. It's got some nice rounded aspects. The clear plastic looks great. There are some stickers which are included in here. And for the most part, like I mentioned, these are the lights and different features. This is what the sheet looks like before they're all used and going through each of them that's on the cab segment here. First off, we have this little segment that can slide up and protect the windscreen like so. And there is the largest sticker of the bunch, which I assume is some sort of sensor that this will use when it's driving about with the shield up. As for the other stickers we have in here, we've got some inside of what I assume are the headlights up front. These are underneath a clear piece, looking very, very nice, I might add. And then the rest are a little bit on the basic side. So we've got these red strips round back, which I assume are the brake lights. We've got what look to be some brake lights on the back of the trailer. Some winkers or indicators up top here on the left and the right, like they usually would be. And these, I assume, are meant to be more lights, like a kind of caution-style light, so it can be seen while it is turning, or something like that. These particular orange ones do have to be put on at a bit of a funny angle, so they can be a little bit difficult. So anyway, jumping into the full 360 spin of that cab, just so you can check out all the detail yourself, we've got the seats up front. It looks like we've got three seats. I from the side, from the size of those seats, this is a big truck. There's a lot of external detail on this. If you painted it up and maybe battle damaged it, weathered it a little bit, filled in those lines, this could look incredible. By the way, I'm not sure if I'll find the picture or not, but I'll throw it up right now if I do. I saw someone on Twitter painted this to look like Optimus Prime. 
Once again, as for the moving parts, that's that sliding shield right there that slides up like so. All the wheels work, the rear ones, these are connected together, these ones and these ones, and the front ones right here, these spin independently, but they do turn together just like that. Pretty cool, and they work, which, you know, always makes me very, very, very happy. So next up in here, we've got the flatbed section from the back. As you can see, this can't really stand up so well on its own. It's not balanced to do so. So I might as well drive the old truck in here. Yeah, I'm having way too much fun with that. To attach this on. So the peg just attaches into the hole like so. And there we go. It's ready to roll out. So this does work really well. Bandai did put a lot of effort into making sure this can drive around perfectly instead of just being a, you know, a bunch of static wheels and not being able to move. So that is pretty cool. These side segments of the truck can drop down just like so. I thought the back would be able to move, but it cannot. It is just the sides. Then we have a gimmick which allows these to pull out like so and then slide down just like that to get your am aim in and out. So just doing that on the other side now so you can actually see the process of that. These pop forward on both sides like that and then it slides down this little rail segment just like that. So there it is dropped all the way down. So then it's time to get your Amame warrior that may or may not be at the borderline yet into the back of the truck like so to transport it to or from said borderline. Then it's time to close up the truck so this part comes up, slide that section up like so pop it in and there we go so now your truck is ready to drive around with the amim in the back just like so so next thing we've gotten here is this right here and this is why i should really look into these kits before i get them this basically attaches in the back right here to attach another trailer so you can make yourself a literal road train out of this and that really gets me a little bit on the bump side because that would have been a lot of fun right there the second thing we get in here that made me wish I had at least one more is this right here. And this is a weapon for using with your Amame. It does say in the instructions to use it with Kembu right here, which we will do, but I'm also gonna try it out with Byakuchi back here just to see if it is usable with other kits. I'm really hoping we see more stuff like this. I love optional equipment. But before I do look at that, I want to try out Byakuchi, the robot Tamashi version of Kembu and a Gundam in the back of the old truck. So the way that Kembu was transformed was you rotated him right here at the waist. So I'm gonna try the same process with Byakuchi. And once that is done, you folded up the legs. This guy's legs are different, so so far not the same. Make sure the head is tilted forward like that. Kembu's arms folded up like so. So, okay, so that seems like what we got out of Byakuchi. Can he fit in the back like so? Oh, yeah, you can transport your Byakuchi as well, no problem. Next up then is the Robot Dimashi, so I'm gonna have to unequip all of the weaponry. I'm just gonna pop the hand off, it's quicker. Get off the backpack. Apparently, the weapons have to be stored in separate containers when these guys are being transported. But let's see, can you true, we lost a bit, twist them around, flip up the leg. Flip up the second leg, the feet come up just like so. The arms then fold to the sides. Put the head forward and it should be the same-ish kind of block that we would have got with the high grade. So let's try slotting them in and see if he fits. Pretty much. So yeah, if you're collecting the Robot Spirits variants of the Amames, well, you don't have to be completely left out. This truck will work with those too. So the last thing I'm going to try this with is a Gundam. So could you make some kind of custom version of the truck that would have been seen in episode one of the original Mobile Suit Gundam? And yep, the Gundam can fit in there fully lying down. Of course, this truck is quite a bit different from that one. But if you want to transport some Gundams in the back of this as well, yes, you can. So the last thing we have in here and something that I did not know was coming inside of this box is the superheated vibrating combat claws, some optional weaponry for using with Kembu. And this is not asymmetrical like the other arms we've seen so far, so I assume you can use this on the left or the right arm so you can dual wield these awesome massive claws. So attaching the claw is quite simple, you just have to remove some aspects of the arm. So pop off the lower forearm segment, then pop off the part above that, and as you can see on the inside of this, it has two holes. A big one up top and a small one down below. So this is exactly the same on the back of the claws. The claw segment is a whole arm. 
You pop that on to the upper arm like so, pop the forearm segment onto it then, and there we go. The claw segment then can just swing down just like that, and that is a visceral, savage looking weapon. How cool is that? So I was playing around with this a little bit earlier on, I thought it seemed a little bit restricted as the arm moves like this, not really with the slashing mechanism of the claw, but I forget this is such a unique kind of mecha design that it would probably bring its arm back like this and bring it completely forward at the shoulder just like so. So this does actually have a whole host of ways that it could actually use this, so that is a pretty cool looking weapon. And what actually looks to be the coolest aspect I haven't tried out yet is the fact that this, as far as I can tell, looks 100% symmetrical. So that, I assume, means that it can be popped onto the other side too. If so, that means I'm instantly running out to get another one of these kits. Because that, oh, it's looking like it's working. Oh no, damn. You can put two on, it can dual wield them, you need two of this kit. Maybe even more so you can have yourself a train. So anyway, that right there is it for the review, and without a single doubt, Gundarium Tier! And just in case you do not know what Gundarium Tier means, well, Gundarium Tier doesn't mean the best of the best anymore, that is reserved for Platinum Tier. Gundarium Tier is a different ranking, that basically means it's like nothing else, it's a build that you just have to have, you need to build. And I feel this kit totally ranks as that, just because I'm having so much fun with it. So, if you're not really interested in a truck, you might want to disregard that. But yeah, this is awesome, the truck is nicely designed, it can roll around the place with super awesome center of balance so it won't even fall over. It's got some turning front wheels, it's got a window, a big shield for up front, it's got a lot of moving parts, it makes an absolutely cool display piece, can be used in dioramas. And not only that, it does come with a weapon that kicks some major ass. This claw looks great and it can be used on both arms, meaning that you could have two. I really wish I had known that in advance, because then I definitely would have gotten the two for the two claws. And to have a bit of a land train too. Anyway, if you do want one of your own, there's a link down there in the description. You can get yours exactly where I got mine, which is from Hobby Link Japan. As usual, thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more model kit reviews, and I'll be seeing you next time. Thank you so, so much to each and every one of you guys for watching these videos. Without you, this channel would not be possible. And my special thanks to those helping out over on the channel memberships and over on Patreon. So that includes Craig Jerry, Caleb Engelhart, Sean T. Van Fawn, Global Frequency Studios, Lawrence Seahack, Joseph Kukluk, Mr. Winter, Forsetti, Joe, and Orgy59061. Whoop! wait a second, I forgot something. Extremely, extremely, extremely important. Does that claw work on the badass Byakuchi? So from what I've seen from this line so far, everything is swappable. So, so far looking good with that joint up there. Take this little segment off like so. Get that big old claw. Wait there for a second, Kenbu. And let's try attaching that. So one, successful so far. And popping on the hand. And absolute success. That looks so good on that bad-ass Byakuchi.